Come ride the little train that is rolling down the tracks to the junction. Forget about your cares, it is time to relax at the junction. Lots of curves, you bet, and even more when you get to the junction. Petticoat Junction. There's a little hotel called the Shady Rest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. It is run by Kate. Come and be her guest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. And that's Uncle Joe. He's a moving kind of slow at the junction. Petticoat Junction. Then there's no point in discussing it. Well, Willie's only asking $23 for it. $24. But you'd take $23. Well, I'd take $23.50. Mom, where could you find a motorbike like this for $22? $23. <laughs> what are you going to use it for? Ride it to school. On the tracks? Oh, I'll put it on the train and ride from the station to school. But you can walk from the station. But it's such a long walk. Oh, yes. Got to be all of 10 minutes. No, sir. I don't like the idea of you racing around the countryside on this thing. Well, Miss Bradley, it don't go faster than six miles an hour. Six miles an hour? Well, downhill. I'll give you 19 for it. 22.50. Mom, $20 for a motorbike is a real bargain. 21, it's got a gallon of gas in it. Betty Jo, supposing I was to say you could have it. Oh, thanks, Mom. Hold it. I said, suppose I said you could have it. Where would you get $17? 19. <laughs> Well, you're always asking me what I want for Christmas, and I thought, that is, well, gosh, this is what I want. Well, aside from the fact that Christmas is a few months away, my whole Christmas budget is $15. 16. 15. 15, but without the headlight. Well, I'll try to raise the money some way. Willie, you won't sell it to anybody else, will you? Well, I can't promise. I got a firm $12 offer from Horace Otis. And that's without the seat. Well, promise me you won't sell it till you talk to me first. Well, okay. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Bye, Betty. Bye. Bye, Mr. Bradley. Doesn't it sound beautiful? <laughs> But I've got to earn some money. What do you need money for? I want to buy Willie's motorbike. Don't slam the door on the way out. Oh, my gosh, Bobby. I mean, what do you need a motorbike for? You're a girl. Well, I know. Then why don't you act like one? Well, how's a girl supposed to act? Why don't you ask Mom? Ask me what? How's a girl supposed to act? You mean you're going to start going out with boys? No, she wants to buy a motorbike. Oh, that again. Betty Joe, it's time you learn the facts of life. I know the facts of life. Then what do you want a motorbike for? <laughs> What's wrong with a motorbike? You're a girl. Why does everybody keep saying that? <laughs> Bobby Joe, you got some cold cream? No, Mom. Well, I have some. You do? Yeah. I'm a girl. <laughs> Do something about her. Like what? Hide her. <laughs> motorbike, huh? Yes, it's a beauty. Oh, God. When I was a boy, I always wanted a motorbike. Did you get one? No. When I was a boy, they didn't have them. Oh, <laughs> what's your pressure? Charlie, there must be something I can do to earn some money on the train. I could sweep the coach. Oh, that's Floyd's job. Well, I could polish the engine. That's Floyd's job, too. Well, I could clean out the firebox. Floyd does that. Hey, Charlie, maybe she could take your job. You ain't doing anything. <laughs> I run the engine. You couldn't run the engine if I didn't throw wood in the firebox. Then throw it. <laughs> Charlie, maybe Floyd had a good idea. I did? What was it? About my taking over Charlie's job. 
But you always let me run the engine when I'm on the train. Why couldn't you pay me for it? You could have a day off, and all I need is $15. That's more than I get. Well, I'd work for less. Oh, we couldn't let you do that. Why not? You let me. <laughs> Betty Joe, I just reckon we couldn't pay you to run the train. Gosh, I'm never gonna get that motorbike. Oh, sure you will. Well, I never did. <laughs> oh, why don't you... Hey, where's my lunch pail? Right down on that wood. That's funny. Charlie, guess what I did? What did you do? Yes. Did you throw my lunch pail in the firebox? Yes, I did. <laughs> What's it getting so mad about? You're always complaining you want a hot lunch. Oh, hi, Betty Jo. How are you, Mr. Drucker? Fine. Bless you. You getting a cold, Betty Jo? It's not me, it's him. Oh, you getting a cold? The dust. Oh. Gets in his nose. Yeah. I guess it is a little dustier on the floor than it would be up someplace. See? There. That better? <laughs> there ain't no dust up here. Well, there must be. He's got a very sensitive nose. Oh. Well, I guess the store does need dusting. You got any idea who could do it for me? I could. What kind of a deal did you have in mind? Cash or jelly beans? Cash. How much? Fifteen dollars? Fifteen dollars? I couldn't pay fifteen dollars if this was gold dust. <laughs> oh, I didn't mean for just once. I dust every week for a year. One dust and usually holds it for a year. I'd be willing to go as high as a dollar for that. I need fifteen. Mm. Willie won't sell for less than fifteen, huh? Maybe without the tires. But I've just got to find some way of earning fifteen dollars. Mm -hmm. You ever think of taking out an ad in the Hooterville World Guardian? No. How much would that cost? One dollar. Or one Dustin. <laughs> a dollar for Dustin in the lobby? Well, that's what Mr. Drucker paid me. A whole dollar? Well, he didn't pay me in cash. If you eat all those jelly beans, you're gonna get sick. Oh, no, I took out an ad in the paper. That's a waste of money. Whoever reads that paper. You're reading it. <laughs> oh, that's just because I ain't got nothing better to do. <laughs> How about dust in the lobby? I'd be glad to, Kate. I don't want to take away Betty's job. <laughs> What'd you say in the end? Excuse me. Here it is. Oh, yeah. Industrious, energetic worker available. To you? Yeah. Doesn't sound like you. <laughs> we'll tackle any job for 50 cents an hour. How come you're charging me a dollar? Well, you're my mother. <laughs> And that cost me 50 cents extra. It's a small price to pay for motherhood. <laughs> Did you get any answers to the ad? Oh, no, Mr. Drucker only put the ad in the paper today. Ah. Well, the ad's only been running three days, Betty Jo. You can't expect results overnight. No surprise to me nobody answered it. They got nothing to attract attention. It's in the middle of the front page, right under the president's picture. It could be under a picture of Sophie Lawrence in a bathing suit. Nobody would pay any attention to it if it ain't got the right word. <laughs> Let's leave it up to an impartial stranger. Morning, Clara. Morning, Joe. Kate, how are you? I'm fine, sir. Clara, as an impartial stranger, have you read the classified ads in this week's Hooterville Guardian? No. See? I didn't get the paper. Well, here, have a free one. But thank you. <laughs> Read it. When I get home. Uh, would you mind reading it now? <laughs> Uncle Joe's conducting a survey. Oh. No, no, re read the front page. <laughs> what do you notice? Say this fellow's picture over the classified ad looks familiar. Isn't that the president? <laughs> Never mind him. Read the classified ad. Oh, I'd like to get in touch with whoever put that in. There's your answer. See you on the train. <laughs> What time should I be there? Oh, Betty Jo, I'm afraid you're a little too young. I, I like to leave Archie with someone who's a little older. Well, I'm a lot older than I look. I'm old enough to get a license to ride a motorbike. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, but uh, Lance's real strict about who I leave Archie with. But I'm very responsible. Would you believe it? I'm the only person Mr. Ziffel leaves his pig Arnold with. Betty <laughs> Jo, babysitting a pig and babysitting a baby are two different things. Well, Mom 
Mr. Ziffel thinks as much of Arnold as Mrs. Begley does of Archie. There's a little difference. I sure wish you could babysit with Archie, because Lem and I would love to see that triple bill they got down at the Pixley Bijou. Floyd and Charlie went to see it the other night at 6.30. And they didn't get out till 1 o'clock, and they only saw two pictures. <laughs> oh, gosh, Mrs. Begley, it'd be a shame for you to miss such a good show. Would you let me sit with Archie if I had someone with me who was older? I don't think Bobby Joe will go along with that. I was thinking of you. <laughs> I'll be fine. Now, wait a minute. I've been babysitting all my life, and I'm not going to do any more. Not until you girls get married and you start yelling for Grandma. Oh, Mom, don't you want me to earn the money? Well, sure. But I don't want to go all the way over to Clara's and sit with you while you sit with Archie. Well, we could bring Archie to the hotel, and that wouldn't inconvenience you at all. Well, what do you think, Mrs. Bagley? Fine, just as long as your mother's there. What do you say, Mom? What I have to do to get a motorbike. <laughs> Hi, Uncle Joe. Who's that you got with you? Archie. <laughs> you may be little and puny now, but don't be discouraged. In 39 years, you'll be a man like me. <laughs> what is going on here? Uncle Joe scared Archie. I did not. He's just showing off his lungs. Can you be quiet? Here, give them to me. Sit, sit. You know, I'll take him upstairs now and put him down. Oh, Mom, I'm supposed to take care of him. You know how? Oh, sure. I raised him from a pup, didn't I? <laughs> okay, here you are. <laughs> and you be quiet. <laughs> oh, Mom, would you mind? I thought you were going to take care of him. Well, well just get him quiet, and then I'll take over. <laughs> Mom, will you hold Archie while I get his stuff organized? Sure. <laughs> get out of there. Come on. Come on, get out. What's the matter with him? Oh, I think he's jealous. Well, here's your client. Oh, it's your responsibility. I don't know how to turn him off. <laughs> What's wrong with him? Well, when a baby cries, he's either hungry or, um... Aren't you, he's hungry? <laughs> Get his talcum powder, his safety pins, and his three-cornered bikini. <laughs> Begley picked him up an hour ago, and uh, she left to this for uh, babysitting. Oh, it's not my fault, Mama. It's his fault. He was supposed to wake me up. What's gotten into you? Don't you want me to get that motorbike? I can't take your two dollars, Betty. Why not? Well, I had another offer from Hank Kirby. Well, you promised to sell the bike to me. Look, all I said was that if I had another offer, I'd let you know so she could meet it. How much is it? Fourteen fifty. I offered you fifteen. Yeah, but Hank, he don't need one of the tires. Oh, well, you've got to save the bike for me. Well, Hank said he'd give me the money in two days. Well, I'll have it for you in two days. Well, if you do, it's yours, and if you don't, it ain't. Yeah, Miss Dawson, I'll ask her. Oh, hold on. Oh, Mr. 
Mr. Drucker, I can hear you. <laughs> Betty Joan, Mrs. Dawson. <laughs> Get this thing out of here. Okay. No, not here. Walk it out. Start it up on the other side of town. Oh, that dang blasted noise making. I knew it was a mistake for him to put a road in here. If he ever gets that thing started... Mr. Drucker, what did you want to talk to me about? What did I want to talk to you? Oh, Mrs. Dawson is on the phone. Clara Bagley told her that you did such a good job sitting with Archie that she'd like you to sit for her for a couple hours tonight with her triplets. You mean she'll pay me 50 cents an hour per kid? Well, I guess so. Gosh, that'll be three dollars. And with the two I've got... Oh, it isn't enough. Oh. Well, I've got a couple of other sitting jobs for you, but the trouble is they're all for tonight. Too bad you ain't three people. But I am three people. <laughs> Betty Joe, Bobby Joe, and Mommy Joe. <laughs> Wouldn't it be easier to cultivate a couple of boys with transportation instead of breaking your neck trying to get a motorbike? Please, I'm not asking for advice. I just want your help. I've got to make enough money tonight to pay for that motorbike. I was going to do my hair tonight. Well, you can take your hair with you and do it. <laughs> I mean, you can do your hair while the Clegg kids are sleeping. The Clegg kids? Well, there are only two of them. I'm taking care of three. I don't want a motorbike. Please. <laughs> I've got to study. Well, the Clegg's is the greatest place in the world to study. They got a hi-fi. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Bobby Joe. I'll never forget this. Don't worry. I won't let you. <laughs> Get off that table. Instead of barking useless information, why don't you learn to dry the dishes? You ought to be arrested for impersonating a dog. I asked Lloyd and Charlie to stop by and let me know how Betty Joe was making out with the Dawson triplets. What are you worried about? I raised three kids just as easy as if I had one. I know, Uncle Joe. And if ever you run for Mother of the Year, you'll get my vote. <laughs> Joe. I wonder what's wrong. Conscience is probably bothering her. She's coming back to dry the dishes. Hey, <laughs> Joe, what? Hi, Mom. Hello there. We brought you some company. The Dawson boys. Does, does Ella Dawson know you have them? Oh, well, she made me bring them. Why? Well, when she found out Mrs. Begley paid me 50 cents an hour, including you, she wanted the same deal. <laughs> Well, you take them back. I, we're not running a babysitting service here for every Tom, Dick, and Harry. Mom, Bobby's helping me. Why can't you? All right, take him up to my room, but don't forget to pull back the spread. <laughs> don't look so unhappy, Mom. You said yourself three children are just as easy to take care of as one. <laughs> Mom, you said three children were just as easy to take care of as one. <laughs> already have three upstairs. Well, two more aren't going to make that much difference. Well, why did you bring them here? Couldn't you handle them? Of course, but it was Mrs. Clegg's understanding that you were going to supervise. <laughs> Mrs. Dawson. <laughs> well, I'd take them upstairs and put them in number three and be careful of the stairs, huh? Gee, thanks, Mom. <laughs> Susie, wait a minute. I'm a little confused. Uh, you're getting 65 cents an hour to take care of your baby brother. That's right, Mrs. Bradley. You see, Harold was going to take me to the dance tonight. But then he wasn't on account of he had to work. But now he is because he doesn't. You understand? <laughs> oh, perfectly. I've got three teenagers myself. Uh, Harold is going to work after all. You want to go to the dance. And uh, you want to leave Herbie here. <laughs> yes. He's cute, isn't he? Cutest baby I've seen in the last 10 minutes. Hey, Pete, where you want us to put these? Who are they? Those are the Parker babies. They're house guests of Herbert. See, I'm getting 75 cents an hour from Mrs. Parker for taking care of Douglas and Gwendolyn. But, Susie, there are already five babies here. Well, that's fine. Then they won't get lonesome. <laughs> I'll sub that Herbie and the Parker babies to you for 50 cents an hour. Lucky me. Hey, these Parker kids weigh heavy. Yeah, well, put Douglas in the presidential suite, Gwendolyn in the bridal suite, Herbie in the governor's suite, and don't forget to take the spreads off. Don't worry, Susie. We'll get you to the dance in time. Eight babies. My, Mrs. Bradley, you're due for a lot of running around. 
Betty Jo may be right. A motorbike would come in handy around here. <laughs> Them young and fed. Waiting time for the Dawson triplets. <laughs> Not now. Babies first. <laughs> Listen to the Clegg twins. They want their bottles again. Good gosh, they've had two bottles apiece already. The way they drink, they should join Milk Anonymous. <laughs> I'm busy. Did you take Herbie's bottle? Why would I take Herbie's bottle? Well, it's missing. Oh, it can't be. Mom? What is it, Betty Jo? <laughs> They're gone. What's gone? I went to feed the Dawson triplets, and when I came back, they were gone. The triplets are gone? <laughs> no, the bottles, all three of them. I don't understand it, Mom. I was only out of the room for a few minutes. Oh, you girls. When you're feeding babies, you got to keep your mind on it, one thing at a time. Now, my bottles are... My bottles are gone, too. I'll show you the guilty culprit. How could you? You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Taking milk from little babies. You wanted to take something, why didn't you take Willie's bike? Save us all this babysitting trouble. <laughs> see those babies again until they use talcum powder after they shave. <laughs> Never worked so hard in my life. Well, it'll all be worth it when I get my motorbike. I made eleven dollars and I need four more. Let's see, that's that's one baby for eight hours or eight babies for one hour. Just a minute. No more babysitting. I've had it. So have I. Oh, Mama, we're so close. If I don't get that motorbike, I'll, I'll just die. Who is it? Me, Mom. Well, what on earth? I've been are looking you... for the dog. I can't find him anywhere. He's gone. Well, he's been out before. But never this late. I'm afraid something terrible's happened to him. Oh, now, Betty Jo. What's the matter in here? Can't a fella get any sleep? Uncle Joe, the dog's gone. Oh, I could have predicted it. That dog's a prima donner. Just because you chased him out of the baby's crib and then bawled him out because he stole the baby's milk, he runs off in a fit of jealousy. You know, you're right, Uncle Joe. We have been ignoring him. That crummy dog don't think of nobody but himself. <laughs> that sounds like Willie's motorbike. Well, what on earth is it doing in the lobby? <laughs> That silly dog did woke me up and tugged me out to the bike and herded me clear out here. So I wonder if the bike even still runs after bumping all over those railroad ties. <laughs> Joe, he wasn't jealous after all. He wanted you to have your motorbike. Oh, I'm sorry, Willie, but I'm still short four dollars. Well, you know what, Betty? That's a pretty smart dog you got there. I trade him to you for the bike. Oh, not on your life. <laughs> you sure got a kooky daughter. <laughs> well, Willie. Motorbikes can be fun, but um, can they kiss you on the face like that?
junction. This has been a Filmways presentation.